Yo guys, Gamer 52 here, and today we got a massive blog post with everything we need to know about zombies in Modern Warfare 3. Alright, so getting into this, we have a bunch of intro stuff right here. We're gonna just skip that real quick. Uh, it's Operation Deadbolt. Explore an open world and search for valuable acquisitions and schematics. And they tell us uh, down below, acquisitions is just uh, any one-use item. So you can get, you know, uh, a single perk can, you can drink it now type of thing. That's a one-use item, that's an acquisition, anything like that. Also, schematics are um, craftables that uh, are on a cooldown, so you can go in with, you know, you can go in with a perk can, you can go in with a, uh, a wonder weapon type of thing, but they're going to be on a cooldown, you can only craft them every once in a while, those are schematics, and you have to find the blueprints for those schematics in order to actually be able to craft them. A world of opportunity. Complete contracts to earn essence, collect acquisitions, and clear missions to discover what is really happening in the exclusion zone. Secure and extract. You also need to learn when the situation on the ground becomes advantageous as well as untenable. Immerse yourself and work with other players to complete the more difficult mission objectives and extract before you're overwhelmed. Uh, we got the lobby. It's a lobby. You, you got a menu with a bunch of uh, bunch of different options at the top. It's, it's really nothing new. All right, here's where stuff starts to get interesting. So if you've played DMZ, this is going to look a little uh, little familiar. Uh, we have your strike team operators. You have essentially your active duty operator slots from DMZ, right? Uh, you're going to start with one. You can unlock another two as you go through missions. If it's anything like DMZ, they're going to also release store bundles that will likely give you uh, extra slots that you can, you know, gear up as well. Um, and so with these slots here, let's, let's open it uh, real quick with this, uh, just so we can zoom in. You can see a bunch of stuff. So you can see that it has five slots. You got your backpack, your kill streaks, your armor, your gas mask, and a self revive. Uh, same as DMZ. And honestly, it looks like that's about it. There, there's no like, uh, there's no X fill streak or anything up there to give you extra perks, which I mean would be crazy to get extra free perks just by you know having an X fill streak in zombies. But uh, you can sort of do that with the perk cans. You know, you can exit with a bunch of perk cans and pop them next match. Yeah. So that's just what the the basic screen is going to be looking like. Uh, so you have rucksacks. Um, all right, so here's what your uh, your rucksack is going to look like. They have a large backpack. So you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slots. Same as uh, same as DMZ and Warzone. Um, they have an Aether Wrench and an Aether Crystal or Ethereum Crystal. Uh, and we'll get down to what they do down below. Um, and you also have a bunch of perk cans that, like I said, have you can just drink them right now to, to get the perk. Or you can save them and exfil with them and get the perk at the beginning of next match. Uh, so if we zoom in, the ones that they have here are Flopper, Speed Cola, Deadshot, and Jug, which is wonderful, wonderful. You also got your Field Upgrade, Lethal Tactical, and your, your Loadout Guns. It's cool that it tells you the, the actual description, though, right? It tells you the description of what the perk does. You know, PhD Flopper can drink to gain, dive to prone triggers an explosion. The explosion increases the higher you fall. Immunity from fall damage while diving. Oh, only while diving. And player weapon explosive damage, so you don't take any splash damage from explosives. It's very nice, very nice. Uh, you have your loadouts, which this again, it's the same as DMZ. You're gonna have um, your insured weapons, three slots. Uh, they're gonna have cooldowns, and then you're gonna have your contraband stash, which in the blog post um, it says it goes to 20, keeping a stash of up to 20 of these weapons for contraband weapons. But if you look at that, uh, if you look at that, this picture, they have 21 uh, available in their contraband stash. So that makes me think that either the picture is an outdated one, or we will be able to unlock upgrades to our contraband stash sizes and other things uh, in the game, similar to how we can in DMZ, which would be really cool. You have your primary and secondary weapons. Yep, yep, yep. Insured slots. Yep, just like DMZ. Uh, pull up over 100 Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 weapons, which is very nice. You got your contraband stash, which is just weapons you're going to be exfilling with and, you know, storing. Uh, and they are going to stay as is. You can't um, add attachments on them. I don't think there's going to be a workbench, but if it's like Cold War, then you may be able to apply a custom blueprint mid-match to get the attachments that you like. And then you've got your, your lethals and tacticals. All right, so here are all the field upgrades that are coming to the game. We have Energy Mine, Frenzied Guard, Healing Aura, Frost Blast, Aether Shroud, and Tesla Storm. Notably missing is Ring of Fire. Don't know if that's just too overpowered. I mean, it has been the past couple of games. It's always been like the go-to for like high rounds, even though there's not going to be high rounds this time. But it was a cheat code. <laughs> it, was, it was. It just made the game super, super easy. So it's understandable that they took it out. Maybe we'll see it uh, again in the future, and they're just going to, you know, rework it and add it in at a later season. I don't know. With these, they each have different recharge times, which I think is really cool. Uh, they did before as well. Uh, it was harder to notice, uh, but like they took different amount of kills to to actually fill up your your bar. Um, and you know, Speed Cola made it so that they had shorter, but still varying amounts of kills to fill up your field upgrade bar, which I thought was really cool. 
So you got Energy Mine is a medium recharge. It spawns an explosive that deals uh, damage when it goes off. And in the gameplay that we saw, we did see that it went off three times. So it pulsed, 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 which was really cool. So it's essentially coming at least partially upgraded compared to like the Cold War system, which I think is nice. You have Frenzied Guard, which is a slow recharge. It repairs armor to full and forces all enemies in the area to target you for 10 seconds. Enemy kills repair your armor during this time. It's really good. It's a really good uh, solo one, if you, especially if you're ever low on armor. It just refills all your armor, and then you can sustain your armor for that 10 seconds as well, which is really nice. Or it could also, you know, pull the zombies off of your teammates. If they're in a sticky situation and you're, you know, just kind of on the outskirts, you can pull them towards you to, to, to go save your teammates. You have Healing Aura, which has a slow recharge, which is understandable. Uh, it heals all players immediately, including those who are in last stand, which I assume, you know, revives them, right? That was always the biggest part of this was you can revive your teammates from across the map, right? All players. Uh, I assume that's all players in your squad, right? Because we know there are going to be teams of three and there's going to be eight teams of three on the map for a total of 20, up to 24 players. Next up, we've got Frost Blast, which is a medium recharge. It damages enemies within the initial blast and slows those that enter the area of effect. Pretty self-explanatory. Aether Shroud, medium recharge, and you just become invisible for a short period of time. Tesla Storm has a slow recharge, which is interesting because honestly, in the past, it hasn't, it's, it's been all right. It, it hasn't been like a uh, super powerful one, but uh, I guess we'll see. For 10 seconds, lightning connects to other players in your nearby area, uh, which stuns and damages normal enemies. Unfortunately, it does not have the increased movement speed that it used to, but I mean, it still damages and stuns them. So maybe they just increase the damage and stun duration. Damage amount and stun duration compared to previously to uh, account for that, to make it that slow recharge time. Now we get to the acquisitions and schematics, which I kind of uh, went over up above. Once you return from your first few successful missions, you're able to place acquisitions into your rucksack for use during subsequent outings. You can also start to craft your own acquisitions at the schematic crafting location in the lobby between drops. So you're not going to be able to craft schematics mid-game. You can only do it in the lobby before you, before you infill into the match. So acquisitions are single-use items that can give you an advantage on the battlefield. Acquisitions you find and expo with in your rucksack can be added to your acquisition stash within your rucksack menu. So if you go down to this picture right here, down here you have an acquisition stash, which they have three available. They have a schematics crafting, you have 21 available. So you can store acquisitions. So essentially you could store a bunch of perk cans if you wanted, right? You could store a bunch of aether wrenches or ethereum crystals if you wanted, which is very interesting and honestly, I don't know how I feel about that. I, I kind of don't want to be able to infill and already be maxed out power, right? I kind of want to have to be able to, to do a little bit to, to get to my max power each match, but um, we'll, we'll see. Maybe you can only have like one of each in here or something, or I don't know, something like that. And schematics are highly sought after plants that permanently allow you to craft acquisitions that you can add to your rucksack. Schematics have a cooldown period after which they can be brought into the exclusion zone. So each schematic, uh, each blueprint that you find and you can craft is going to have a cooldown. Some of the, the people who got to play early said that, for example, the ray gun has a 48 hour cooldown. So you can bring it into a match, but it's it's got a cooldown to it, right? Big, big two day cooldown. You might be able to reduce it uh, similar to DMZ. You know, if you if you like exfil with like amount of points or by doing contracts or something, there may be some sort of cooldown system, but uh, they do not go over that in this blog post. Spoiler alert. The following type of acquisitions can be found and used or crafted if the schematics are located and all have a rarity value associated with them, denoting how difficult they are to find and how much they improve uh, when you use them. So there are rare, epic, and legendary Ethereum and uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary Aether tools. And what each of them do, the Ethereum gives you Pack-a-Punch. So Pack-a-Punch 1, 2, 3... Find one of those crystals, it'll automatically pack your weapon, which I think is sweet. I don't know if you're going to have to already be at pack one to use the pack two, or if you could just go straight to a pack two or straight to a pack three if you find a legendary Ethereum. That would be very interesting. It doesn't say it instantly upgrades you. It just says used to upgrade your pack of punched weapons, right? So we'll have to wait and see how those actually affect. And then you've got all your Aether tools, uh, which increases the rarity of your gun. Uh, the guns have rarity levels. Uh, the, the colors on them, right? So common is gray, uncommon is green, rare is blue, epic is purple, and legendary is orange. So you can see how they can uh, really start adding up and stacking if you, if you get a bunch of these together. All right, next up we have our perks, and you can see there are nine perks available. We have Deadshot Daiquiri, Death Perception, Elemental Pop, Juggernaut, PhD Flopper, Tombstone, 
Stamina, Speed Cola, and Quick Revive. And instead of having vests, gloves, and boots, you know, you have your, your perks. That's nothing new there. So what each of these does, Deadshot Daiquiri makes it so that aiming down sight moves to the enemy critical location. So headshots or whatever the crit location is. If the crit location is like a uh, like a shatterable piece on their chest, that'll be where, where your crit is going to be. Uh, it also removes scope sway. So Death Perception, we have Obscured Enemies, Chest Resources, and Item Drops are more easily spotted. So what it does is it's going to put an outline on on whatever uh, obscured thing is uh, on the other side of a wall or you know a tree or whatever and any type of the environment you'll be able to see it through walls and stuff elemental pop every bullet you fire has a small chance to apply a random ammo mod effect and we'll, we'll see the ammo mods down below as well juggernaug increases your max health no surprise there phd flopper diving to prone triggers an explosion the explosion increases the higher you fall immunity from fall damage while diving immunity from area of effect damage from weapons you are using using so no explosive splash damage will uh hurt you but only for only your own so it does not you know protect you against explosives from enemies if an enemy ai throws a throws a semtex at you it's not going to help you against that quick revive reduces the health regeneration delay time by 50 percent with which is massive. Previously in Cold War, honestly, Quick Revive was the best perk. It was better than Jug. It was better than Armor just because you could start regening your health so, so quickly. I think it was like 70% there. So 50% is a little trimmed down, but it's still a very, very powerful perk. It also reduces the time it takes to revive an ally by half. So it's twice as quick to revive and twice as quick to start regening your own health, which is very, very good. Speed Cola, drink to reload and replate armor faster. So they added to this, which is wonderful. You can replate armor faster, which is going to be super, super huge. If you're in a tense situation, you need to, to add some armor plates to, you know, be able to survive. You can do that real quick with Speed Cola. Stamina up increases your run and sprint speed. It does not increase the duration, which is interesting. That's That's got to be a first. Tombstone Soda on death. You create a Tombstone Stash at that location. Containing your backpack inventory in the next game. So... If you die in a game and you have Tombstone, what it does is if you go to that same location in your next game, you'll be able to get everything from your backpack back, which is incredibly useful. That is super, super good. This is this is the best Tombstone ever. They actually made Tombstone useful, which is incredible. Now on to the ammo mods, and there are five of them. We got Brain Rot, Cryo Freeze, Deadwire, Napalm Burst, and Shatter Blast. So the weapons you are currently holding can be further augmented with an ammo mod. For the exact effect each mod brings to battle, why not test them out uh, in exclusion zone once you find or craft them? So if we're going off of previous effects, what they did is they each had their own cooldown. So, you know, uh, the, the more powerful they were, the longer the cooldown would be. I think Brain Rot had like a 40 second cooldown between each time that it could it could go off. And then it was just a percent chance from then on that it would go off, right? So it wouldn't be every 40 seconds automatic. It would be every 40 seconds you have like a 20% chance or something. You know, I'm just throwing out numbers there. Um, so what Brain Rot would do, it would turn a zombie to, to fight for you. It would attack other zombies. Other zombies would go towards it. Uh, they did also one shot. And what they did is once they died, they'll explode, damaging all the zombies around them. And you could upgrade it so that it also infected three other zombies. But I don't... It sounds like they're kind of tuning down. You're not going to have like the the ultimate effects of each of the ones from uh, previous. You're just going to have like a, like a mid tier. So I don't think it's going to infect three other zombies, but we'll have to wait and find out. Cryo Freeze would freeze that zombie and it would make it so that it took more damage and it slowed down. It was also the best one you wanted to use while you were going for camo grinding because Cryo Freeze didn't deal damage, right? It increases your own gun damage. And so you couldn't have, you know, Brain Rot or Deadwire or any of these that actually deal damage steal the kill from you, which wouldn't count towards your camo progression. So Cryo Freeze is actually going to be really good, again, most likely, for camo grinding, assuming that these ammo mod kills wouldn't count towards your, your actual progression right we know you're gonna need like pack a bunch of kills to to get certain camos so it's not a pack bunch kill if it's a brain rock kill right all right next up we have dead wire which set off a little electric shock uh on that zombie and any zombies right next to it um it would shock them stun them for a second deal a little bit of damage and then they would continue napalm burst did uh, a little burst of damage and then it did some damage over time to the zombie that it hit um if the zombie died i believe it also dealt some damage to the zombies around it but again that was kind of the uh, the higher tier ability that we may not be getting i don't know it's interesting that this is the only thing that they're not really uh not really telling us in the blog post and it's it's a pretty like common thing right we already had these before so it makes me think that they might actually have potentially some different effects all right, and finally, Shatter Blast. What it did is it would make an explosion around the zombie that you hit, and it would hurt all the zombies around it. And honestly, it was the best of the field upgrades, in my opinion, for, for pure kill ability, right? So at base, it would have one explosion, and it would deal a lot of damage. I, th I think it was all an insta-kill every time. 
Uh, maybe you could upgrade the damage through the uh, the upgrades in Cold War. And eventually, you can make it so it did three explosions, which would just absolutely decimate an entire horde of zombies. And it was it was really powerful. I, I could see them nerfing it back to probably just one explosion or maybe three explosions that deal damage instead of just insta-killing. All right, next up, we have our wonder weapons. We've got our ray gun. I believe this was called the Scorcher in the, the gameplay that we saw. And the Wonder Waff. Locate necessary and devilishly difficult to find schematics, and you're able to craft some of the most arcane and powerful weaponry ever seen. The wonder weapons available at the game launch are currently Raygun Scorcher, Wonder Waff. I don't know why they have redacted. It's really, really obvious, and I'm pretty sure they've they've said it before, so that's that's very interesting. All right, now we are getting into the missions. So the missions are going to be uh, laid out similar to DMZ, where you've got, you know, tiers of missions with a story mission at the end. Complete tasks within a mission and receive unlocked missions and rewards. Complete missions within a tier... And receive the rewards complete all tiers to finish an act and receive an unlocked mission and rewards so this is talking about how after you finish all the the regular missions or maybe all but one type of thing if it's similar to dmz you could do all but one in a tier you could skip one every tier uh and unlock the story mission which they're going to talk about later on complete all three acts to receive a some sort of reward and continue to uncover the mysteries plaguing the exclusion zone prior to the storyline continuation at season one so that's really really good confirmation that we are going to get more more missions and more storyline when season one hits which is going to be in like the beginning of december like less than a month after the game comes out which is going to be really really good looking forward to that but if we go up here, we can read, Beginning to acclimate to the horrors of the Urzikstan Exclusion Zone and commence a multi-layered storyline that focuses on a variety of tiered missions in three acts. Not all missions are immediately accessible, and the mission, singular, you wish to complete, which may have multiple tasks, is highlighted. So you can only have one mission activated at a time, which is interesting. I mean, it's going to take a little longer to get through all the missions, which I kind of like. You know, it adds to the grind a little bit. It'll make it a little longer before you absolutely max out the game, which I think is cool. Mission completion rewards, including acquisitions, cosmetic items, durable items, whatever that means, and double XP tokens are also visible prior to info. You can, you can just see the rewards that you'll get for completing the mission, which is kind of expected, to be honest. All right. Next, we have the mission parameters, the essence of zombies. You have freedom and flexibility to explore the exclusion zone throughout Urzikstan, and infilling allows you to complete a wide variety of activities as well as the specific mission tasks you assign to yourself prior to the session start. Aside from the specific mission tasks you are undertaking, each zombie infill enables you to explore, investigate the low, medium, and high threat zones. This can be done with a purpose, or you can simply remain in the relative safety of a low threat zone as you learn how to deal with a variety of enemy threats. Weapon leveling is an excellent plan within the outer edges of the map. I do think that weapon leveling is going to be really, really good in zombies. Um, it always has been potentially the fastest compared to other modes. It's always been really, really good. So I think it's going to continue to be like that this, this time. Uh, I know when people got to play early, they said that in their one hour session, I think they were able to get to like level 15 on guns and level 15 in an hour. Like if you remember during the beta, those guns did not level up that quickly. And I think they're going to have similar leveling speeds compared to that beta. So zombies could absolutely be a very viable way to, to level up your weapons, especially if you don't want to go into PVP, right? You don't want to go into to multiplayer war zone to level up your guns. Like if you just want the fast and consistent way to do it, like it, it could just be zombies. All right, you can also complete contracts this allows you to earn essence the in-game currency mainly gathered after zombie culling and acquisitions by completing contracts in the field for operation deadbolt uh, it's kind of a mix of contracts from dmz and objectives from outbreak so you know there was an escort from outbreak there was a uh, limited hvt from outbreak there was a cargo delivery from dmz there there's just gonna be a whole mix of different contracts which i think is gonna be really cool you can upgrade to progress, spend essence at machines across the map, and upgrade your weapons and gear. You know, you can buy perks, you can buy pack-a-punch, stuff like that. Extract acquisitions. Successful exfills allow you to keep acquisitions to get a head start in the next deployment. So that'll be really, really cool. Um, I do hope they limit the stash so that you can't just, you know, infill with max level everything already. I, I And that you can't just, you know, store like 20 cans of jug or 20 like ray guns or wonder weapons type of thing. I hope there is a little bit of a, of a grind and you can't just like stockpile everything. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. That is a sick image that uh, <clears throat> I probably use for the thumbnail, to be honest. Within the deployment, your tack map displays a variety of interesting game features, and some of the most important ones are detailed below so you can understand how to interact with them. So you have buy stations, allows you to purchase a variety of helpful items such as killstreaks, gas masks, and other essentials, as well as sell any unwanted items that you've collected. Uh, you're probably able to buy like armor plates and armor vests, I guess, if it's similar to DMZ, right? 
We did see that there are going to be kill streaks, and in the gameplay that we saw, I think we saw Jug and Mortar. I'm not sure if there were any more. There, there, there might be. I'd have to go back and look. All right, next up we have our Perca Cola machines. This allows you to purchase a beverage that increases your prowess in a variety of ways, which we already went over what they all do. And it's, of course, it's the classic Juggernaut with a ray gun. It's a good picture. You got Pack-a-Punch. Uh, this upgrades your currently carried weapon, usually in the ammo and damage departments, for a price. The people who got to play said that Pack-a-Punch was only available in each region uh, for the level of that region, right? So if you're in the Tier 1 on the outer edge of the map, you could only do Pack 1. If you're in Tier 2, you could go up to Pack 2. And if you're in the, the high tier, the Tier 3, then you could triple pack your weapon, which obviously is going to be very, very useful. All right, next up we have our wall buys. Uh, they're just nothing new there. Mystery Box, of course, offers an exciting randomly generated prize, likely a weapon of varying rarity and occasionally a wonder weapon like a ray gun. And that's it. That is that is everything that we learned in uh, today's blog post. I am absolutely looking forward to this game mode. I did enjoy Outbreak. I like round based, of course. Everyone does. Um, and I did. I really enjoyed DMZ. So seeing them mix the modes, I think is going to be really fun. This this was a great view into what we are going to get. And honestly, I mean, it's just going to take some playtime, right? I think it's going to be great. I know that not everyone has the same opinions, but honestly, give it a shot, right? It, it, it hasn't come out yet. Wait until you actually get your hands on it before you, you know, you judge everything and, and see if it's for you. It could turn out being a lot better than you expected. I am going to be covering a ton of zombies content as soon as the game launches, so feel free to uh, to stick around if you want to see any any in-depth guides in the future. I do try and make really straightforward, easy to follow while being in-depth and, you know, detailed breakdowns of uh, all the game mechanics and Easter eggs and everything like that. So if that interests you, then feel free to subscribe for some in-depth guides in the future.